Hello, good evening. Hold on just one second. And so, Baruch Hashem, last week we finished Torah Kav Ches. And today, I mean 28, and now, Bezat Hashem, Mitkashut Rabbeinu HaKadosh, we're going to start Torah 29, Chav Tes. So again, we visit the uh, um, mysterious and opaque um, debate. I don't know how to call it. Dialogue uh, between um, the the sages of Athens and Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananya. So we have said already before that the entire exchange, uh, that is spread over a few uh, terrors of Rabbeinu, um represents the conflict between the Esau and Yaakov, between the point of view of Esau and the point of view of Yaakov Avinu. Um, originally, the, the idea was that Yaakov Avinu will be learning Torah and Esau would have a tougher job, which is get to Torah and support Torah from this world. You know, facing the, the drudgery of day-to-day -day reality and so forth and so on. And Yitzchak thought that, you know, that Esav actually meant to do that, that he was, you know, and I, maybe he was, a, he was a hunter, he wasn't somebody who was sitting in learning Torah. Nevertheless, you know, he gave his father a, 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 this, this notion that he is Gewaldiger, um, Machmir, Medakdek, the mitzvahs, to the point that somebody was a wants to be miser of salt and straw, which you don't have to give any mercy from. But uh, he basically the idea was why would Asa want to miser salt? Why would he want to miser straw? Um the idea behind it is that if somebody is sitting and learning and, and serving Kaddish Baruch Hu, you can, you, it's, it's expected that you will meet all kinds of spiritual um, challenges and therefore, um, the idea is not to uh, overpack your wagon when you start out. You know, you should should be able to leave some space for extra baggage. But when somebody is going into into fighting the Sahara in this world, um, by you know, by working on this this world and and, and being involved with with uh, dealing with people, dealing with business, and so forth and so on, a person has to be extra machbir because extra careful. 
I mean, obviously, everybody has to, everybody has to uh, keep Allah, huh? keep to the letter of the law, as they say. Somebody who is into Avedis Hashem, that is enough. There's no need to be extra strict. In fact, it is not advisable. But if if you are into uh, if you're dealing with with commerce and with this world, and you're mixed up with with uh, people in this world, so you have to create an extra barrier that will keep you safe. That's why, for people like that. The, the way they dress is more important. Uh, and various things to keep them safe while they are. It's like somebody who is, you know, was uh, an astronaut, you know, is in, ensconced in a spaceship. And, you know, if he, you know, but there, you know, they can, they can roam around and float upside down in T-shirts. But if they want to go for a spacewalk, you know, to repair some kind of a satellite or I don't know what, they have to wear a spacesuit that will protect them from, you know, the environment. So that is the idea of ASOV initially, what should have been, would have been. Um, his role. So he, you know, he he told his father, Boba Meister, and he cheated his father, this is what he was looking for. That's the, the source for the question of how do you mice salt? How do you mice a straw? Um, so he managed to give Yitzchak the impression that he was taking this role seriously. But we know that not only that, but it's, you know, turned out to be totally opposite. So this story, you know, these, this kind of give and take between the sages of Athens and, and Yaakov Avinu, they, they boil down to the, the, the basic argument is that Esau, and therefore, you know, the sages of Athens, um, claim that this entire world is a futile existence. And their, their main thrust is the whole thing is meaningless. Uh, and even if it were to be meaningful, uh, you're never going to make it anyhow. That's the message of Asaph. Yaakov Avinu, on the other hand, is all about a voice Hashem. It's all about hope. It's all about you're going to make it and just the way you are. You should be happy just the way you are. I mean, it doesn't mean that you should not fix what needs to be fixed. But you cannot fix what you can what what you cannot fix. I mean, sorry, you can't fix what needs fixing unless you actually actually accept yourself the way you are right now. It sounds paradoxical, but it's actually anything but. On one hand, the ambition has to be eternal. On the other hand, the trust in the Kodesh Baruch Hu has to be rock solid. Just the way you are. Just the way you are. Yeah, you want to be better. But the Kodesh Baruch Hu loves you and wants you just the way you are. So here's the way this particular story goes. 
This is just F of Athens asked Rabbi Yeshua ben Hanania, Hi Gavra, the Azil boy eats the Lord of Avila. A person, such a person, that person, that that goes um, to to seek uh, a wife, a woman. But okay, Avalon, and they 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 refuse to give him that woman that he's seeking. Why would he ever try? As a second option, someone, another woman that is, you know, of a higher status, a better one. Why he's going to ask for, you know, to, to try his luck, as it were, from, uh, uh, you know, with, with a woman that is more choshev and more miyuchas than the first one. The 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 lesson he should have learned a lesson from his first experience that they didn't give you you know option B so you're going to I mean you're going to some you're going to some your second option is option A should have learned this is a typical que you know question of Asaph it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You see, you try, but it's not going to work. Shokol Sikso, he took a needle. That's a Lusato Loal. He tried, you know, he sticked, stuck it in the wall in a place where there was no hole. And needless to say that the needle would not go in. Dadi Totso, he lifted his hand up above. Leilo, when he lifted it up, Al, he lifted his head to, to, to the place in the wall where there was a hole in the wall. And the needle went right in. Oma, he, Oma, he told them, he explained to them. <coughs> Even though this person did not get the first woman, he's going now to seek a woman that is more hush is more important than the first one. Because it might very well be that the first woman he seeked, even though she was, you know, on lower stature, it wasn't the one, it wasn't his mazel. She wasn't his ziva. And now, you know, the higher one might be his zivug, might be his mazel. At the end of, of this, of the Torah, obviously Rabbeinu will explain what all this means. But you can, the first thing you can already see is that Ace of Greek secularism their whole kavana, their whole Indian is, come on, who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? Who are you looking for? I don't know. Can't you already tell from all your past failures that you're never going to be here? Not only this, but now you're looking into higher things to do. It's not my business. I'm supposed to do whatever it is that I can. This might go, this might not go. You know, some people, they learn Gemara. Or if you toys for Shoshone, you know, and they're very, very good at it. Some people, they go to learn Kabbalah. Very simple people. So you ask yourself, but you know, you're not supposed to learn Kabbalah. Rabbit ears. 
that's supposed to work, learn Kabbalah uh, until you fill your stomach with Shas and Poiskin. The answer is, I mean, yeah, you need to learn Shas, you need to learn Poiskin. But for some people, this is their derech. This is something which is their part of their neshama. This is, they, they are fit for learning Gemara, you know, Shas, and Poiskin, the Iyun. The entire world stems on that. But Kabbalah is, is it's a higher limud. So if you didn't make it as a Tamit Chacham, you're not, you know, you're not specialized. You know, your talents are not in the field of learning Gemara, you know, with great Iyun and Pesach and great Iyun. What business have you to learn Kabbalah? The answer is, it has nothing to do with it. You know, here, I can succeed because this is my Shosh and Nefesh. Or I may not succeed here, but I may succeed here. Ah, this is higher, this is lower. That's not going to me. Not going to me. I need to do whatever it is I need to do. Whatever it is they can, this is the way I need to do it. Ah, it's higher, it's lower. I don't know what my muzzle is. I don't know what kind of shovel I have. There's a very basic, there's a very basic eternal optimism. And behind the the point of view that if this doesn't work for me, that might work for me. Asa was exactly the opposite. If this one didn't work for me, the other one for sure will not. So Rabbeinu starts, Kilo called Dibor Nikra Dibor, not every speech. Is called a dibor. It's called a speech. Ki dibor she'eno nishma v'neskabel because a dibor that is not heard and is not accepted. Eino nikra dibor. It's not called a dibor. It's not a saying. Yifchinas in oimer ve'en dvorim bli nishma koylam. But about the shemaim, about the heavens, without saying, without words. Without their voices being heard. In other words, when we say in the Pasuk in Tehillim that that Bli Nishma Kolam, that their voice is not heard, is hinted in it the Dibor is not heard and is not accepted. There's no saying, there's no words, there's, nothing is being said. Because the the fundamental union of Dibor, of speech, is to sound, to communicate with other people. And if the Dibor is not accepted and is not heard, it's not called a Dibor. It's not called a speech. The main thing that causes a Dibor to be accepted, because there is goodness in it. There is intrinsic good in it. Good? Everybody wants good. And that's why when there is good there's goodness in the speech. So Dibor Nishma Van Skabal, then the Dibor is heard and is accepted. But when the Dibor, when the speech is bereft of goodness, it's not being accepted. And I've been asked, how do you how do you insert goodness in the Dibor? is when you take the Dibor from the Das. Then there's good in it. But when the speech is without good, there's no good in it. 
מבחינת גם בלא דס נפש, לא טעית. When there's no דס, נפש לא טועים, we know the נפשי יוצא בדברוי, the נפש, דיבור is in the נפש. You know, כי נפש is the דיבור, is, 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 כמו שקוזנית היא said, ויהיה אדום נפש חייו, the man became a living a being, את הגומוי לרוח ממעלו. הקדוש ברוך הוא created man, he said he, he, he made a, a, a living a, a being, The, the Targum Unkelos is the Ruach Memalot, the speaking spirit. Because when the Dibur is without Das, it is not good in it. But when you take the Dibur from the Das, then there is good in it. I would say that the mountains literally mountains of books in every feasible or 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 whatever you want to call it um, discipline were written on this Indian of the Dibur that contains good uh the union of taking the Dibur from the Das, when a Dibur is being miscabled, when it's not being miscabled. The basic, the basic union is, Rabbeinu says, everybody wants good. Good is the Misa, the answer, to the problems that I'm facing. Good is a direction I should go in. Good is the goal that all, 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 all the roads are leading to, or should lead. When you come to someone who has financial problems, and you advise him how to run his finances or how to, you know, get a gainful employment uh, that is befitting him, that is sustainable, that is tenable, uh, a person will be very, very interested. When you're speaking to a child, And the child is by nature, you know, uh, an unruly, unruly being. He was an higher parent. You know, the, 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 the child is, is, is a wild bronco. He needs to be, he needs to be educated. He needs to be uh, guided, you know. Guidance by nature means that you're limiting certain options. You're opening, you, you know, telling, opening the good options and you're, you know, blocking the bad ones. But the thing is that when you speak to a child or when you speak to any person, the deeper itself has to be taken from the Das. Das is a realization of what the situation is, what is missing, what will fill whatever is missing, and what's the best way to, to approach it. If that person that you're talking to is basically someone that has been disappointed in many ways, in many ways, maybe even someone that uh, identifies himself as a reject. We all know, we all met people during our lifetimes. 
that that somehow always managed to um, to get you know set up and betrayed by their bosses and this this kind of 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 experience is constant they go from job to job from boss to boss and uh, in you know invariably they 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 get shafted And you wonder to yourself, how does this person manage to find all the, you know, all these these dishonest businessmen to work for? Not only this, but the places where these people work, the other people working there, some of them are working for decades, everything is okay. So why, what gives? Well, the answer is that that particular person has a certain, without getting into whatever, it's just has a vested psychological uh, interest in 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 being rejected, in being in being swindled, in being being set up. <clears throat> it doesn't matter who, what, and how. But the point is that when you're talking to someone that this is where he's coming from. Your deeper has to have the das, has to have the, the seichel to realize who you're talking to and give him the kind of advice that is going to help him. This is my team to him. When you speak to a child, so the idea is to give him chizok at the same time that you're giving him a constriction. You know, a child will lie invariably to tell him that he's a liar. That's it. He's not going to listen to you anymore. Why? Because this deeper, there's no good in it. But if you tell him, you know, that a, a child like you, you know, you doesn't befits a child like you, you know, to to say things that are not true. You're better than that. You're essentially telling him that he lied in both in both ways of speaking, but one of them has good in it. One way of saying it has good in it, which is nourishing, which gives the child something he can identify with. The other way, you know, calling him a liar, basically, you know, there's no good in this deeper. It's ostensibly true, he said something that is not true, but you, and, and that, at, at this particular point, when you call him a liar, he is not going to listen to you anymore. The way says deeper that doesn't have good, is not heard, is not being accepted. You know, if you all take a newspaper, very, very few people can resist the temptation of seeing a newspaper. If you, if you were sitting together and you saw, let's say, a Jerusalem Post or the New York Times or whatever it is that there was in front of you, chances are Chances are, unless you're very busy, whatever it is, you'll take a look. I don't know if you'll pick it up and read or whatever, but you'll take a look and see what's going on. But as soon as you realize that this is an issue of the New York Times from three months ago, the whole oomph to read it will just evaporate immediately. Why? You haven't read 
that issue of the New York Times or Jerusalem Post or whatever. Why not read it? I mean, you don't know what's written in it. Just the same way as you don't know what's written in the New York Times of today. So why would the one of today, the New York Times, the issue from today will get you to look at it? And the issue of the New York Times of a couple of months ago is not even interesting. The answer is the only reason why you look at the New York Times of today is because the nefesh is looking for renewal, for chidush, for something different, for, for excitement. And we are so coarsened that usually the things that do it to us are the tragedies, the, the, the catastrophes. Good news. Why? I mean, it's not, why, why, why do we want to see bad news? And we, we're, we're almost like immune to good news. The answer is because it doesn't excite us. We're looking for chiddush. We're looking for excitement. But the truth is, you know, but when you're looking at something that is a couple of months old, an issue of this newspaper that is a couple of months old, um, the chiddush is no longer there. You realize that the news value I'm choosing in that old um, issue of the newspaper is dead as mutton. There's nothing there. It's old news. So even though it may be new to you, but it's old news. There's what you need. But, but the point is that the words of the newspaper that, you, that was published today are as meaningless as the words of the newspaper that was published a month ago or two months ago or yesterday even of last week everything that they say in the newspapers literally everything i would say 99.99999% is meaningless how do you know that it's meaningless? But, you know, it's important to hear the news. Why is it important to hear the news? Why is it important for anybody to hear that there's been a, a bus crash in, in bus fell off a bridge in, I don't know, in India, Pakistan, and plunged who knows how many people to their deaths? Why is it important that you know that? And why, when it's a week old, eh, it's yesterday's news, it doesn't matter anymore. What's going on? The answer is it's meaningless today and it's meaningless last week and it's meaningless two months ago. The only reason why you find today's newspaper interesting or this hour's news interesting is because you have a need, I have a need for some excitement in my life. For to excite myself and become new. And that's the only thing that will get me into Avedis Hashem. That's the only thing that will get me into learning Torah. The only thing that will that will equip me to, to actually, but the thing is that their Diburim are empty and meaningless. How do you know they're meaningless? Take a look, the same Diburim. If they are weak called 
How come it becomes unimportant? Why is it unimportant? Just because it happened yesterday. If it happened this morning, it's already not important. If it happens now, what makes it important? Nothing. The proof is that if it happened yesterday, you see it's no longer important. However, when when a tzaddik, let's say, like Rebbe Kanievsky, passed away, that is something that you need to know. Because, you know, when a tzaddik leaves the, the town, the beauty of the town is left it. The importance of the town is left it. The world becomes a darker place. The schus of the Torah of the Tzadik is, is left. It's important to know everything else. The thing is that when you listen to things that you don't need to listen to, let alone things that you need not to listen to. You end up not hearing the things that you need to. The hearing is a very, very, I mean, hearing, the senses, the hearing, the seeing, whatever, is, 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 Ravina specifically talks about hearing because hearing is, is, is the marshal, the, is the parable of of believing, of, of receiving something you can't see with your own eyes, that you can ascertain, you cannot make sure. When you refuse to hear bad things, or shonoro, whatever, you end up hearing good things, Mishanai. Is that the shame? We'll talk a bit more about it in Mitzvah Hashem next week. We'll finish now in Mitzvah Hashem. Uh, we'll meet tomorrow night in the breath of Abyss Medrash.